Is Brittany Griner going to become the female Greg Oden? Is Becky Hammond's career finally over? What the hell is wrong with the Connecticut Sun? Is there anything that Candace Parker can't do? Can the Mystics actually make it to the playoffs? There's so many questions that everyone is asking this season alone. Guys, this has been an absolutely crazy, crazy season. I apologize for not making a video sooner. Got a summer job, summer love, summer everything. It's just been crazy, but no excuses. I'm back. Never going to leave for that long again. Put that on Kobe so you know it's real. So let's start with the Eastern Conference. The team that is leading everyone in the East right now is the Chicago Sky. Now Chicago Sky. <sighs> They've always been that team. Decent team. Never can make it to the playoffs for whatever reason. They've always been this close. And now it is very apparent that they're definitely going to the playoffs and they're going to be the number one seed coming out of the East. And of course, that's all thanks to the person I said deserves a number one draft pick. But we're not going to get into that. Anyways, it's all thanks to Elena Della Don, the rookie of the year. I just have to say, it's kind of funny how everyone like automatically gave Elena Della Don the rookie of the year award like after the second game. It's just funny how everyone can agree Elena Della Don is a better rookie, but yet she didn't deserve to go number one. And we'll don't even try to blame it on Brittany Grant's injuries because Elaine Deladon is not injury free at all this entire year. Actually, um, she's actually out right now. Not sure when she's coming back, but hopefully soon because we all are not really sure if the Sky can keep up this momentum without the potential best player on the team, to be honest with you. so. We'll see, but to be honest with you guys, the East is so sucky. I don't really see the sky falling. I mean, it's clear that they're going to the playoffs, so Sky fans, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. I just don't really see. It's going to come down to Atlanta versus uh, Sky, and I don't really think that Atlanta has enough, has what it takes to beat the Sky to the number one seed. Sky are good. They have a 2.5 game lead over the Atlanta Dream right now. So even though Atlanta Deladon will be missing a few games, like I said, it shouldn't even matter, to be honest with you. Um, Sky are in the playoffs. Now, Atlanta Dream. Eh, Atlanta Nightmare. No, they are going to the playoffs, clearly, because there's no competition for a long while. Everyone's like, oh my god, Atlanta's going to win the Eastern Conference, da da da. But then Sky started skyrocketing. I didn't even try to do that like that. That was a horrible pun, if you can even call it that. But anyways, yeah, the sky started skyrocketing, and they're taking the lead. And to be honest, they I think that they, they're going to come out the East, to be honest with you. So get ready for that, Chicago fans. But yeah, so Atlanta, they're doing the thing. They're just 2.5 behind the Chicago sky. Um, Angel McCautry, guys, Angel McCautry is passing the ball. Wow. Like, let's give it up for her. Angel McCautry is actually passing the ball. You guys know I like to poke fun at Angel McCautry, but I can't even lie. She's playing absolutely phenomenal this season. Uh, she was on a better team, had like the best record in the East. She'd definitely be, um, cons oh, she's being considered for the MVP, but of course, if she was like on the best team in the league, then no doubt about it. She would be getting the MVP award definitely this year because she's not just shooting, because we all know she can shoot. Even if you don't like her, you gotta admit, bro, that girl can shoot, like, good lord. She can shoot, okay? So she's still out there getting her 30 plus a night, man. And then she's actually passing the ball. It's not just two or three assists a night. This chick, the other day, I think she rung up like 33.7 assists. Like, she is balling. That's crazy. I think that's absolutely crazy because everyone knew Atlanta was gonna have a big, big, big problem if Angel would have stayed Angel and in the absence of Lindsay Harding. So I'm actually very proud to see that Angel McCaudry is taking more of the actual leadership role, not just captain because you're the best player on the team. But she is taking on the more of a leadership role, you know, being a better teammate. And I'm actually really proud of her. So shout out to Angel McCaudry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Atlanta Dream, they're good. They're definitely going to the playoffs. So Atlanta fans, get ready for that. And for some reason, Atlanta always does way better in the playoffs than they do in the regular season. So, Angel McCautry might take over, one drop 40, 50 tonight, you know, you never know what Angel McCautry, you have absolutely no clue what she's capable of. So, 
it might be Eastern Conference Finals, um, the sky versus a dream. That's actually is probably what it's going to be considered the seeding. So that would actually be really interesting. Um, yeah, so look forward to that. The third team in the Eastern Conference right now is the Washington Mystics. I'm not joking. The third team in the Eastern Conference right now is the Washington Mystics. Do you guys understand that? The Washington Mystics. Let's just compare from the past like freaking four seasons to where they are now. Hats off. Seriously. Washington Mystics, to be honest with you, they're actually one of the most exciting teams to watch, to be honest with you. Um, there are some games where they get blown the hell out, but then there are games where you're just like, wow, if they had like just a one more person or whatever, they would be a really legit team. Gotta give a big shout out to my homegirl, Ivy Lada. I love her. She's the most, she's just the funniest person in the freaking WNBA. I just, I love the fact that she is, that she lives in the state of Georgia because it's like, dude. I'm around her. It's, it's cool. But anyway, so yeah, big shout out to Ivy Lada. She is doing the damn thing. Like, bro, you already saw her while out uh, during the All-Star game. I was so excited that she got that opportunity. She definitely deserves it. She's just a phenomenal person, phenomenal player. And she's seriously the reason why Washington is doing so well. And it's not to say that, you know, she's the one that's carrying the team. It's just her spirit. If you never met Ivy Ladder or, you, you know, you don't watch her, like, in videos or anything like that, you don't truly understand the giant significance of having someone with her spirit on your team. You don't really comprehend, like, what that does. Everyone loves to be around Ivory. She definitely has taken the actual Washington franchise and put that on her back. So definitely, again, shout out to Ivy Lada. Love you, girl. And Washington might surprise some people seriously they might surprise some people man wow if, if it does come down to what i'm thinking then it's probably going to be washington versus the sky so we'll see i mean sky has bodies washington has bodies washington has ivory lada like i don't know it, it'll just be really interesting ivory lada versus epiphany prince like that'll actually be a really good season and to be honest, I mean, you never know. That's the one thing that you love and hate about the WNBA when it comes to playoffs. It's not necessarily the best team that always wins. It's just who wants it more that night. And since you only need to win two games in a WNBA playoff series, you never know, bro. You never know. And I'm a Tar Heels fan. I know what Ivy Lad is capable of in crunch time. If it's a close game, she got the ball. We could be looking at Washington Mystics advancing, Chicago Sky not. But then again, they have Epiphany Prince and EDD, so it's just that'll be actually a really good series. I think a lot of people don't understand how, how good that series will actually be. I would watch it definitely no matter what. Now it comes down to the last spot. The last spot, guys. Kind of pains me to say, because, you know, I am also a Liberty fan, Capricorn Extra fan. So it's a struggle right now. This season has been a struggle. Um... I knew as soon as Essence Carson went down with the ACL tear, this was not going to be a very good season. Um, it was actually crazy. I was just talking to Essence Carson uh, the night before, I think it was, or the two days before the Atlanta game where she tore ACL. And I was just letting her know, like, yo, bro, everyone knows I love Carson. I love Car Car. I was just like, yo, bro, I really think this is your season. Like, she. She already had many games where she was a leading scorer. I think with uh, Bill Lambert's uh, offense, this was really her season to really shine. And um, she was doing just that. Went down with the ACL tear and yeah, I just knew it was not gonna be a good thing at all. But moving on from the sad stuff, um, Liberty, they've just had it hard. They've had it tough for really the past like three years. Happy Pondexter in general. You know, switching from different coaches, different, you know, styles of play, and then you get someone as legendary as Bill Lambeer. Everyone knows how he plays. He wants her to pretty much just change her position a little bit. I, it's just a lot. It's a it's a big uh, hurdle on Cappy Pondexter's back. Some nights she can have her 30 points. Other nights you're like, what's going on, Cappy? 
it's just a struggle. Um, but there's still a lot of time left in the regular season. And then again, Cappy is just an natural born scorer. I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be biased, but I really do think that, excuse me, I do think that the New York Liberty will be the fourth seed. So that means that Cappy Ponics, they're Planet Pierce and all the all-stars that the New York Liberty do still have on their team are going to have to just give more, give their all. But I really do think that they, they'll do that because they all, they are all-stars and Kyrie Ponex are one of the best players in the entire league. So when that leads us to talk about the Indiana Fever. Indiana Fever, I don't see them making the playoffs, to be honest with you. I think that Fever fans should already know that. Um, even though they are one game ahead of Liberty right now, it's just not enough. It's not enough. Even though the Liberty have a lot of problems, you know, on and off the bench, it's like, no, nah, I don't, I don't see the Indiana Fever. They, they don't have bodies. That's, that's the point. Like, they don't have bodies. But then again, you never know. Shavante, they only won the championship because Shavante Zealous decided to become a crazy all-star. So if she starts playing like she did last year in the playoffs, then... Fever could take off. Well, not take off. It's not like they're going to skyrocket to number one. They're going to be in the playoffs at number four. Um, yeah, three pushing it. But, I mean, me personally, I just don't really see that. It's just, they just have way too many injuries. Way too many injuries. I don't think that they can make it. Because everyone knows the, the season gets a lot tougher. You know, those last, like, five to ten to five, five to ten games. The season gets a lot tougher, and uh, the New York Liberty have a lot of veterans on their team. They're going to push, and they want to be back in the playoffs. I'm not sure if the Indiana Fever have such skilled veterans like the New York Liberty, so I don't really see them going to the playoffs. But the good thing is, Fever fans, in my opinion, the good thing is that that means you guys will have a top four lottery pick. And you guys already had a pretty good team because you just won the championship, so that's just adding on to you guys. So I think that either way, it's kind of a win-win for the Indiana Fever. They're not going to win another championship. Everyone knows they're not repeating. That that, that was kind of a given as soon as they won. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. But so that leads me to talk about the last team. I can't even remember who the hell. Oh, the last team in the Eastern Conference. Crap, I don't even... Oh, wow. You know it's bad when you forget about them. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with the Connecticut Sun? Like, seriously. When I tell you, I just laugh. Like, I, I laugh at them. Like, they get blown out. It's not even like they're coming up close. Like, they get blown out of games. There's absolutely no excuse. Like, no, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a Connecticut fan at all. I'm not a hater either. They don't really do anything for anyone to have haters. It's like, what the hell? You know what it is? Um, no, actually, I'm not even going to do Tina like that. It's actually many, many things. But all I'm saying is, it's absolutely no excuse for a reigning MVP to be selected as a reserve All-Star player. Let me get closer so I can say this again. There should never be a reigning MVP that gets picked as a reserve all-star player. That's on her. That's not on her team. So no one can say, oh, it's just her team that sucks. No. <laughs> her team isn't the reason she got picked as a reserve. Okay. She, her team could be freaking winless. If she's out there getting her points and her boards, she would still be a freaking all-star. The fans didn't even vote for Tina Charles. Like, <laughs> she needs to get it together. This is absolutely unacceptable. Being a UConn fan, I'm actually disappointed, very disappointed. And, you know, people want to say, oh, can I get hurt? Oh, boo-hoo. Guess who's the most? Everyone is hurt, seriously. Every single team is hurt. But the number one team that is hurt right now is the Indiana Fever. Where are they right now? They're sitting in the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, struggling like hell, but they're still, right now, going to the playoffs. There's absolutely, I have no sympathy for the Connecticut Sun. I have, I have absolutely no sympathy at all for the Connecticut Sun. It's just funny. When I see the final scores of their games, I laugh. It's just like, you guys suck. You suck. Like, seriously, it sounds stupid to say, but it's like, 
there's just absolutely no excuse for how bad the Connecticut Sun are playing right now, to be honest with you. And to be honest, I called it. I didn't really believe it when I called it during the summer, but I was like, yo, they're gonna suck. You know why? Because I'm sick and tired of coaches getting fired for the team's mistakes. I never even liked the guy because he's always yelling and complaining, but he's a good coach. He is a freaking good coach. Gee, let's see, which team is he coaching now? Guys, he did not deserve to be fired. The Connecticut Sun are just not a championship team. That's just life. There's millions of teams and, you know, millions of leagues. They're good during the season. They just bust. Honestly, the freaking Connecticut Sun are just like the LA Clippers, to be honest with you. Ooh, ah, they're a good little team during the regular season. They're just not championship worthy. I do not agree with the firing, but it is what it is. He's on to better things now. His team is winning. Like, it is what it is. It's just funny because, like, Connecticut sucks. Like, dude, I seriously do laugh. I have no sympathy at all because there's absolutely no excuse. Injuries, whatever. Nah, bruh. No excuse. Connecticut has seven wins this season. Tulsa Shock have eight. And Lord knows they're not even doing good. <laughs> There's absolutely no excuse. Connecticut sucks. It's a happy year for me because I never liked them anyways. So, yeah, Connecticut Sun fans, sorry that you have to see your, t your team play so bad. But honestly, there's absolutely no excuse. Don't fire coaches. You won't have these problems. The end. Connecticut's not going to playoffs. The only teams going to playoffs are Chicago Sky, Atlanta Dream, Washington Mystics, and New York Liberty slash Indiana Fever. That's it. Eastern is done. And now the fun part of the video, the Western Conference. You know what? I'm gonna start from the bottom up. Start from the bottom up. Alright, anyways. No, so yeah, we're gonna start from the bottom. Let's look at the bottom. It's funny because the team that's on the bottom, a lot of people thought they were gonna be on the top or the middle. No. Bottom line, Tulsa Shock will always be the Tulsa Shock, okay? No, I'm not even gonna do them like that. To be honest, just like I said many, many, many videos ago, Tulsa Shock are a fun team to watch because they have so many good players, but when they get together, they create something great. That was lame, but no, seriously, I do really enjoy watching uh, Tulsa Shock games. They give their all. I feel like they will be that underdog team. They're kind of like the Washington Mystics, to be honest. If they were, if Tulsa Shock played in the East and they made it to the playoffs, I think that they can maybe upset some teams. Like, honestly, I do. But they ain't going to do nothing against the freaking LA Sparks, uh, to, uh, Phoenix Mercury, you know, the Lynx. No, it's just, it doesn't even matter. So, Tulsa Shock, they're not going to the playoffs at all. Um, so, that means they're just going to keep on getting good draft picks. It's kind of funny. Past, like, what, how many, ever since they came into the league, they keep getting top draft picks, um, yeah, but they're not doing anything. But honestly, they, they are a really good team. I'm not sure. It really just sucks that the WNBA was larger, like the NBA, then the social shock. We're kind of like the Kings, you know. Kings sometimes can make it into the playoffs. Other times, they're just trash. Now, I'm not going to do them like that. I would say that the social shock are the Phoenix Sun. You never know. You always have the Phoenix Sun, at least in, like, in the top 15, you know or something like that, like, they might make it, no one's holding their breath, but you wouldn't be surprised to see the Phoenix Sun in the number 8 seed. So that's pretty much what the Social Shock is. It's just unfortunate that there's not that many teams. They're in the hardest conference, to be honest with you. I don't, Social Shock's not going to get out of the conference. They're not gonna, they're not gonna make it in anytime soon to be honest with you because you're always going to have the Sparks, the Lynx, and the Mercury. Well not always for all of them but most of them those are the top three and so the Social Shock will always be fighting for the fourth seed. Right now was the only year to do that because Seattle is missing Sue Bird and Lauren Jackson. Okay, okay that's one team, okay. Second team they're missing, Silver Stars. Um, Becky Hammond and Sophia Young. This was seriously the best case scenario for the Tulsa Shock. Sadly, they're not doing anything. So I don't really have sympathy on them. It's like there's just absolutely no excuse to be honest. 
be, I feel like I can say that because I'm one of the people that actually sees what they have. They're really a good team. They are. Why the hell aren't you guys taking advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? Because to, to be honest, Tulsa Shaw might never make it into the playoffs, to be honest with you, because Seattle, they're getting their players back. Silver Stars, it's like, I don't understand how Seattle's playing better when they have nothing there. Tulsa Shock, I'm very disappointed. Disappointed in Skyler. Not that disappointed because I'm like, you people, I didn't hype her up like that. I knew it was going to be a very big change for her. She's a guard of all people. Like, it's just a very big thing. But Tulsa, I'm just disappointed in them. This was their once in a lifetime opportunity and they blew it. So, nothing left to say there. Um, bunch of good players, good team. I guess I just don't want it or something. Honestly, I don't have anything to say. They're not they're not going to the playoffs. Moving on. Okay, moving on to the Silver Stars. They currently are not going to the playoffs, but they're only two games out of playoffs taking Seattle's spot. Silver Stars. Um, I remember in the video that I made before, I was like, it's either going to be Silver Stars or it's going to be Seattle. I didn't think Seattle would do anything at all. I just assumed the Silver Stars would just fall into place into the fourth seed. But they're not doing that. Um, another team I'm actually disappointed in. Yes, I understand Becky Hammond. That's just sad. I really don't even want to talk about Becky Hammond because I really don't want to see her career in like that. So moving on, she's not there. Unfortunately, Sophie Young isn't there. I understand that the Silver Stars are missing their two best players. However, I also understand that Daniel Robinson is one of the most underrated players. Daniel Adams is one of the most underrated shooters. They have a good team. I'm not going to use the word good. They have a decent team. I feel like I can say decent because looking at their roster, even with the injuries, they still look better than the Seattle Storm that are two games ahead of them. Daniel Robinson and Daniel Adams are not doing what they need to be doing. Both of them can be going out there getting 20 plus games every single night. I promise you. That's how much I love both of those two. Both of the Daniels, I don't know what's up. They're not cutting it. Very disappointed in that. This was also Jana Pell's year. She's doing a little bit better, but it's like, bro, Seattle, not Seattle, uh, Tulsa Shock and the San Antonio Silver Stars are just not doing just the simple things that needs to be done. Very disappointed in both teams. Of course, more like I'm um, more disappointed in Tulsa Shock. Um, like I said, the Seattle Storm, just hats off to them. Seattle Storm have a two game lead over the Silver Stars and about a game and a half behind Phoenix. Phoenix is falling. Um, Seattle, I don't know how, what, when, where they're even managing to win games, to be honest with you. But they're doing it somehow and the only way that that'll work is just teamwork. Because Lord knows they do not have the best looking roster at all in the league, in the Western Conference at all. So really it's just teamwork. I have to be honest with you, I have not watched a Seattle game this entire season because I've been so busy. It's like, why would I make time for Seattle? <laughs> but um, I have watched it when they actually play a team that I care about, you know? Um, so I, I'm not really sure who's who, not, not who's who, I'm not really sure what players actually holding the team together. But I can just automatically assume that it's not one player in general, it's just an entire team that's coming together as a unit. And I have a lot of respect for teams like that. Sadly, Tulsa Shock can't be together as a unit. A lot of teams don't understand how to play together as a unit. So definitely shout out to the Silver shout out to the Seattle Storm. But then again, it doesn't really matter who makes it into the fourth seed because the number one seed is gonna win. So but for all it's worth, big shout out to the Seattle Storm. Um me personally, I don't ever believe in a team, you know, fluking Phoenix. <clears throat> but, um, worst case scenario, not worst case, worst case and best case, if the Seattle Storm don't make it, at least they get a draft pick. So they get to pick up a new good rookie. And then they still have two all star veterans coming back next year Lauren Jackson and Sue Bird. So, no matter what, Seattle deserves respect. I normally don't like those people, but I'll give them props. Good job, Seattle. Okay, and now I get to talk about the two best teams in the Western Conference. Woo! And of course, my favorite team, the Sparks. Is this about to be biased? Actually, it doesn't have to be biased this year 
because the sparks are just that good. The sparks in the leaves right now are killing the West as always. The only difference is this year, the team that actually looks the most stable is actually the Sparks because they have had the most actual blowouts. They're taking care of home court advantage and that is the most important thing for this entire season. Coach Ross explained that earlier during the season, that's the most important thing. The only reason that the Lynx got home court advantage, well they were the better team last year, I cannot deny it, but they definitely took care of home court advantage. Sparks are doing that this year. They're running people the hell out of Staples Center. This has been just a phenomenal year for the Sparks and the Lynx both. Um, you can pretty much go ahead and crown Candace Parker MVP. I know a lot of people are going to have a problem with me saying that. I'm sorry. She won the Western Conference MVP for a reason. There's many players that are playing great. Of course, you have Diana Taurasi, you know, Andrew McCautry, Candace Parker, Candace Parker again. She's killing the game. It's so funny when haters try to dispute this. There's absolutely nothing to dispute. Absolutely nothing. I'm not the biggest fan of Diane Taurasi, and I can easily, easily give her congratulations. That girl is balling this year. I'm really proud that she's actually back and not sitting on the bench just for the hell of it, you know? But no, seriously though, Candace Parker is just untouchable. The stuff that she does is just like, God. And she won't dunk. She thinks it's funny because basically Candace Parker is not about to lower herself just to please everyone else. Brittany Griner's out there dunking. That's cool. That's Brittany Griner. She's a kid. She likes to have fun. Candace thinks it's funny to mess with fans and the team, run up to the goal on a fast break, about to dunk, and then just lay it up. She thinks it's funny. I just love her personality. Why am I talking about her like I'm in love with her? Because I'm actually not. My WBA crush is... Not going to tell you. No, but anyways, um, she's in the Western Conference. No, but so, um, yeah, the Sparks are just killing the game. They just have so many weapons. It's just unfair. Like, Chrissy Tolliver the other night almost broke her career high, which is just 30 points. You would think that it's like freaking 50 points the way that girl shoots, but she had 28. Coach Ross put her on the bench because we, they were winning too much. <sighs> Coach Ross, you're killing me. But no, the Sparks just absolutely have way too many weapons. Um... But we already know that, so I'm not going to sit here and talk and name all their weapons as if you guys don't know. I'm not going to insult your intelligence like that. But one person I will give a big shout out to, well, there has to be two. My girl, Lindsay Hardy is seriously just the missing piece. I didn't even think that the Sparks were even missing a piece until Lindsay Hardy came. It's like... Watching the games, the way that she flows, the way that she passes the ball to everyone else, it's like, where have you been? Like, they needed her. They needed her. And now that she's there, it's like, God, the Sparks just look like they are absolutely unbeatable, to be honest. They absolutely look like they're unstoppable. And I love that this is my team, because if I didn't like the Sparks, oh, I would be such a hater. So I understand why people always hate on my Sparks, but it's all good. Anyways, number one player that I have to go a big shout out to is Jantel Lavender. J Lab, you deserve every single thing that you're getting this entire season. You're getting more uh, PT, because you're playing more, you're getting more smart with it. Like, Jantel Lavender is seriously actually becoming someone that the Sparks need. Not just, oh, it'd be nice to have her. They need her on the team because she's coming off the bench, giving the extra push. Number one thing that separated the Sparks from the Lynx last year, the extra push that comes off the bench for the Minnesota Lynx. Sparks have that this year. It's phenomenal seeing Jantel Lavender just grow as a player. I can go on and on about the Sparks, but I don't want this to be just a completely Spark video, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Everyone's playing good. Right now, I'm of course, Candace Parker is the best player for the Sparks. But besides Ace, I have to give the ball to Christy Tolliver. No, shit. I don't even know who to give the ball to. There's so many players. I think that's right now. I have to give the ball to Lindsey Harding just because she's filling a void that no one even knew needed filling. It's just crazy. Yeah. So Lindsey Harding, and then she can share it with... Gentle Lavender. Shout out to both of them. Sparks are just amazing, guys. Amazing. Yeah. And hold the phone. I love my Sparks. One thing I can admit, we did not play defense at all. We did not play defense last season. This season, Coach Ross is stressing it. Defense, defense, defense. It doesn't matter if we're up by 30. D 
defense. It's crazy. I love it. Like, God, I love this team. These playoffs are about to be so wild, guys. You have no idea. I'm so freaking excited. I'm so excited. Okay, so yeah, moving on. So we're going to talk about the Lynx. <sighs> I got to give them their props. They're doing what they do. <laughs> They're playing like the Lynx. They are the best team in the West statistically right now. I'm 5.5. They are the best team in the West. They're taking care of business. Um, one player I do have to shout out. Um, she's not even, she's definitely not my favorite player on the team. Lindsay Whalen. Lindsay Whalen is on one. Like for real. She is really on one. Um, yeah. I, there's no jokes that I can say about that at all. She's handling her business. She's actually pretty much playing like this is her team this year. You know, because there's a lot of players that a lot of people consider, oh, this is their team, it's more Gus's team, you know, uh, my Moore's team, da da da. Mm. Lindsey Wayne was pretty much taking that captain hat right off of Simone Augustus' head. Um, but one thing I will say, I love Aug. She's definitely a top three favorite of mine. Uh, she's not having the best season that she could be having. So I think it's very, very critical that Lindsey Harding did, uh, Lindsey Whalen did step up and take that leadership role. So hats off to Lindsey Whalen. She gets the game ball for this um, season so far. But Simone Augustus, you gotta get back. But I already know she is, so I don't even have to talk about it. Simone Augustus is one of the most talented players in the entire WNBA in women's basketball, period. Freaking love that girl. Regardless what team she plays for, that's just, she's, she's just really cool. Um, one of the best players in the freaking world. I know she'll get it together. And if she doesn't get it together by the end of the season, she's definitely going to get it together by the playoffs because she's one of those players. As soon as the lights get bright, boy, she off. She going. So, yeah, Lynx are definitely going to playoffs, of course. Um, Lynx, Lynx inspires. I'm just ready for this Western Conference final. Like, I don't even understand. I slick wish that... It wasn't just three games, like it doesn't need to be that, it needs to be five, like the finals, like bro, because it's crazy, just two games, really, two games separate Sparks and Lynx. This, basically, the home court advantage is so crucial, it is so crucial, oh my god. Honestly, I honestly want to go ahead and say that whoever wins home court advantage they just might win the Western Conference Final, guys. I just might. But then a part of me doesn't want to say that because Sparks this season are a much better home team than the Lynx. So, I'm so excited, guys. Like, oh my god. I have new roommates this year. <laughs> they don't even know what they're in store for because as soon as the playoffs start, you already know I'm going to be bouncing off these walls. Oh my god. I'm so excited. So, yeah, guys. That's the Western Conference Finals. I have the, in no order, Sparks, Lynx, um, <laughs> I forgot all of the teams. Oh, Mercury, and the fourth team, uh, it's going to be Seattle Storm. Because I don't know what's wrong with the Silver Stars at all. Um, I don't know. Well, honestly, it really doesn't matter who gets to the fourth, because whoever's number one is going to kill them. It's going to be a sweep, and... It, it, I don't know. It's just, I'm really excited. I don't even know what to say. All I know is my Sparks are going to the Western Conference Finals. I know that for a fact. I would like to see the links there as well so we can do this up again. So, yeah. It's just that number one spot is so, so vital for so many reasons. Home court advantage, one, two, you get to play the weakest team in the conference playoffs. So, that means you're going to have more time off to rest than any other team. And three, I was on a roll. I don't know what I was about to say. Oh yeah, three, um, number two, number three is actually going to be a very difficult first round series. I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's the Lynx versus the Mercury, and you never know what the hell Diana Taraji is going to pull out her freaking sleeve. And Brittany Griner just might start playing like the all-star that everyone thought she was. <laughs> so yeah, um, that one, number one seed is going to be so vital. Honestly, like as soon as the Sparks win number one, then I'm just going to crown this as victory champions, baby. Yeah, L.A. I clearly don't have a class to go to right now, but I'm going to stop recording. 
and go get something to eat. <laughs> Alright guys, it's been fun. I seriously do apologize for being AWOL all summer. I was watching games, I just was not recording videos. I've had just a crazy, crazy summer. New things, new life. Um, I'm transferring schools in the spring. So excited. I'm actually going to start bringing you guys through my college life so you guys can be there for me. Be there with me so you'll see like day to day what the heck does Lex do when she's not watching basketball. To be honest, I'm watching basketball 24-7, so, and then NBA season's about to start. Why am I still talking to you guys? You guys don't care. Okay, I'm going. I'm gone. Bye. I love you guys. Mwah.